Welcome to Podnuts Daily for September 10th, 2008, episode number 74. And if anybody wants to um, chat or um, have a place to kind of hang out and talk tech and see who, what, what other Podnuts pod listeners are lurking about, um, I set up a site called the Podnuts Lounge. Is that podnuts.com slash lounge? podnuts.com slash lounge it's basically a chat room and it's um you can just go there if you don't want to hang on Ustream all day or if you're bored and you want to just chat and see see if you see if somebody's in the chat room there now i've done it with java so um i that's that's the, the program i found it's called add-on chat and it's java based um if a lot of people don't have that or don't want to load it then let me know and i'll try something else it's just the first one i found that looks pretty good and um but if it's a pain in it like i said if it's a pain and you don't want to deal with it See, I want a lot of people to be in the lounge if they want to and, and not have to worry about they have Java loaded or not. So um, give me your feedback on that. Let me know if you like it or if you want me to switch it around to something else. But you can check that out after the show or any time. It's open 24 hours a day. So um, if you feel like lonely, you know, and you feel like just talking tech with somebody, maybe somebody will be in the chat room there and you can talk with them. Anyway, I just set it up. It was uh, an idea, idea I got from AMD Man, who's in the chat here on, the, on Ustream. And um, I... Uh, I thought that was a great suggestion. All right, I had a, a guy come in with two uh, two wireless laptops, and or two laptops with wireless. He was having problems with his wireless. This is the same guy that said when he was on the phone with Verizon because he was having trouble with his wireless internet. Verizon told him that Verizon FiOS is not compatible with his Acer computer, and <laughs> there's nothing abnormal about an Acer Acer's wireless card in a laptop. It's it's standard like wireless G, so there's no reason why a, a FiOS router would not work with it, and that, that was ridiculous. Um, I actually ended up installing Windows XP on it. He had Vista on it. See, he had a Vista on a machine that was a Celeron M, old, like an old, old, like two-year-old Celeron M, 512 mega RAM. That computer had no business running Vista. We put XP on it, the thing ran like a rocket, and there was no wireless problems after that, by the way, um, until now. He brought that computer and a Dell in at the same time. He said both computers cut out wirelessly at the same time, and um, he wants me to fix them. Well, if two computers are running along fine, and then at the same day the wireless cuts out, it's probably not a problem with the computer. It's probably a problem with either his modem or the router or something with the Verizon signal. So I basically just um, – I checked them both out. <laughs> One of them – oh, here's, here's what I, why I brought it up. I remember. One of them has a hardware, a, a hardwired wireless switch on it. Did you ever see these laptops, guys? Most of them have them, not, not too much anymore, where some t in order to switch the wireless card off, you could take a little switch It's on the side of the computer and switch it off, and then it'll turn off the radio, the wireless radio. I've, I've had computers in the past, in my early days, where they weren't getting a wireless signal, and I didn't know they had that switch on it. And I'm trying to figure out why it would not find any wireless networks in the area. And it was simply that switch. I'm saying this because if somebody's out there and kind of new to the uh, computer repair field, that might be a solution to look for when, the, when a person's laptop or desk, laptop can't find a wireless signal. Turn on the wireless switch. It's usually on the side of the computer. Some computers have them on the keyboard. It's like you have to hit function F2 or function F8. It'll have a little I, little picture of a wireless tower or something on the key, and that's how you activate the wireless card. By default, these wireless cards should be on, but every once in a while they get turned off for whatever reason. Somebody could bang into it or whatever. Anyway, this, this laptop actually had one of the wireless radio turned off. Um, so that was probably the main problem. But when two, wire, two laptops go bad at the same time, odds are it's not the laptop. It's something else. So pretty obvious. You know, any, in, anyway, in any case, because they were both running a little slow, and uh, last time I gave them to them, they were running real fast. So um, it was only been like a couple weeks. I did a system restore back to the point where like, I, think, I think I created a restore point before I gave them back to him. I brought both of those computers back to the restore point I created, and that – helped the speed of the computer, and it might have helped with what was also cutting out on the wireless. So it's a good idea to create restore points when you're done with a job. This way, if a customer has a problem with it, you could kind of go back to the spot you were working on, and maybe that will cure everything. Okay, I had another computer, and you know I don't know the ex exact specifics of why this works, guys, but I have I've, this is like the third computer I've done this on, and it worked. I had a laptop. And it was running Windows XP. 
um, I'd start it up, and there was this thing called service host, which is a common thing that's in – if you do Control-Alt-Delete, go into the task manager and look at processes or – processes? Yeah, processes running, I think. Service host is usually in there. I think it's – I don't know what it exactly it does, to be honest. But some programs, uh, I guess, use that or it's called that, and that, that does something <laughs> – I've gotten computers where that thing, that service host, is t sucking up like 100 meg of RAM, and it's also doing 99% CPU usage. It's just cranking out the processor. Um, I've done lots of things like removing spyware and malware and the viruses and doing dial-a-fix and running a cleaner and all that stuff, ha and hasn't handled it. What has always handled it for me lately is installing Service Pack 3. I install Service Pack 3, and it just calms down. The thing runs fine. So... After you do all your if – it's, if it's a computer that has malware on it, after you do all your malware checking and virus removal and stuff, if it doesn't have Service Pack 3, update it. And that usually um, smooths things, things out, like corrupted system files or maybe like DLLs are a little messed up or things that aren't running normal in Windows. A lot of times just running the Windows updates and getting Service Pack 3 on it handles it. That happened with a laptop I had today. The service host wasn't maxing out the, the processor at this point. It was just taking up 100 meg of RAM, and it, I don't know what it was doing. So after I ran Service Pack 3, everything calmed down. It ran fine. So that, that's a fix. I'm going to recommend it as a fix. Even though I don't know the exact specifics of why it works, it works. Okay. Um, okay. This is a computer that I had about a month ago or so. It was a computer I was banging my head up against a wall on this laptop every time I tried to install Windows XP. I'd start the installation. It would load all those drivers in the beginning with the blue screen's blue with the gray bar at the bottom, and it tells all the drivers are loading. Well, when it gets done loading all those drivers, it says setup is now starting Windows. Every time it got to that point, you would see setup is starting Windows, and then it would blue screen after that. And the blue screen would say plug and play device driver, or the plug and play has encountered an error probably caused by a device driver or something like that. And I tried taking every component out of this machine. I took out the memory. I took out the wireless card. I switched processors. I switched RAM. I switched hard drives. I switched CD drives. I tried it on external monitors. And everything I tried, I flashed the BIOS twice. Um, everything I tried would not stop this blue screen from happening. It only happened when you installed Windows XP, though. If I ran Nopix, it would run fine. I installed Vista on it, which is what I ultimately did. It runs fine. Okay, so I wanted to sell this computer today because the customer had traded that in and um, just bought a new Acer because um, I was going to replace the motherboard. Um, she also had a bad CD drive in it, and just the cost of all that would, would, um, would be a little too much. But anyway, I, after she